I was just like one of the people at the other side. Uh, I was angry, I was annoyed, I was really, really pissed off. And what we decided to do was to uh, set up a party. Why set up a party? Well, it's very easy to set up a party, actually. But the thing that we found was that if you just try and persuade politicians, nothing happens. Nothing at all. So for what we decided to do was to set up a party and try to kick politicians, if essentially, in the ballots. So that's what, what we intended to do. We, uh, we tested our message, and after just six weeks, we stood in the EU elections. In the EU elections, we got 19,000 votes. Doesn't sound an awful lot, but we spent 604 pounds, uh, which was not an awful lot of money, but we got more votes in our first election than the Greens, the SNP, UKIP, and applied. So we know that there is something in the message that we were putting forward. Now, we're trying to appeal to the best of of Yorkshire. Uh, we're trying to appeal not to the typical stereotypes. I, even, I've, I haven't even got my hat on today. Uh, my sister says, put your hat on, but I think that people will think that uh, you are taking the mickey if you're wearing a flat cap. Anyway, uh, what we've tried to do is construct the party in a slightly different way. Uh, there's some leaflets being handed out. Essentially, where we get unity is, is by uh, focusing on the Yorkshire Pledge. And it's a very simple, straightforward statement about what it is that, that we want and what we believe in. Uh, the reason why we felt that was important was because the old left-right thing is a little bit, well, old that, and it hasn't worked for Yorkshire. So from our perspective, we wanted to try a different way. We've also uh, uh, tried to get unity by having a code of conduct for any elected representatives. Anybody who knows or has heard of Martin Bell, he actually introduced the Bell Principles. We've incorporated those into Yorkshire First Constitution. Uh, okay, so, so what have we done since the election? Well, essentially, we've been trying to build uh, not an organisation as such, but a group of supporters that can actually go out there and that are prepared to stand up and take on the existing parties. Uh, but what are the kind of issues that, that we, we're really, really focusing on? Well, for us, it's, it's about, uh, we've, we feel that there's no over-centralised British state. When you've got an over-centralised British state, how do you actually tackle it? Now, for us, we think that the right answer, and as you can see on here, we've got a similar-sized population to, to Scotland, we've got an economy twice that of the Welsh economy, but we haven't got the powers. We've got 22 councils, only one county council that only covers half a million out of the 5.3 million population of Yorkshire. So, so for us, uh, uh, we think that it's very important to actually look at this again. But what we don't want is a top-down approach. The problem with the UK, for us, is that it's over-centralised. So the last thing we want to see is something such as an English Parliament. Because for us, that is exactly what we've got now, but with a break on it called Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So for us, it has to be built up from the ground. Uh, and why a regional government? Because Yorkshire has regional challenges. We all saw what uh, a Welcome to Yorkshire has been able to do. They were fantastic. They were able to beat the UK government and the Scottish government and win the Tour de France start. Uh, so for us, we know that if we pull together as a region, we think that we can actually achieve great things. We've got the worst performing uh, schools in the country. That is a major issue. If you want to invest in the future, you have to invest in your children. So for us, that is a key issue that, that we'll be focusing on uh, in the upcoming elections. Now, what we were really pleased with coming here today uh, for was because we think that there's an opportunity. There's an opportunity to take the fight to Westminster. Now, I don't know if you're aware, but the BBC rules are highly discriminatory around the uh, uh, access to election coverage. Uh, the coverage that you get is dependent on how many seats you stand in, in in any of the four nations. So if we stood 10 candidates in Scotland, we would get excellent coverage. We would have to stand 89 candidates in England. The problem is there are only 54 constituencies in Yorkshire. So we're a little bit uh, annoyed. <laughs> Chris told me, don't say pissed off. So, shit, I did it. <laughs> uh, 
So we're quite annoyed with this. So what we've decided to do, we decided three months ago that we were going to take the fight to Westminster. We are going to put a candidate up in the cities of Westminster and London, or it might be the cities of London and Westminster. Who cares? It's the heart of the centralised system that we've got that most people in the era have probably got one or two issues with as well. What we want to do is to stand a candidate and we actually want people to support us down here uh, uh, to, to be almost uh, a catalyst. Uh, it's very bizarre that Yorkshire First would want to stand outside of Yorkshire. And so for us, what a great catalyst that could be. We just think that if people in London actually want it, it would be a marvellous, marvellous thing to do. And people asked, asked me several months ago, what was the biggest thing that you've actually learned over the last year? Well, for me, very clearly, the thing that I learned was it took me one and a half years to decide to put my head above the parapet. I didn't want to do it. But I have to say the biggest lesson that I've learned is action matters. So if you're planning something, all I would say is put your head above the parapet. Action matters. It's entirely up to you. You can either sit and talk or you can actually act. So for us, uh, we decided to act. Uh, and what I'd like to do now, I, this is uh, news uh, today, and I'd like to introduce uh, our candidate for Westminster. He's uh, uh, a Yorkshireman, and, and you can probably tell from that beautiful blue, Yorkshire first blue suit that he's got on there, uh, that uh, uh, he's, he's, this is Chris Whitwood. Chris Whitwood is from Yorkshire, uh, from the Selby and Ainsley constituency, but he, like many other graduates, 40% of the graduates, they've had to go south for work. Now, for us, we want a strong capital city, but we do not want a strong capital city that succeeds by sucking the life, vitality, wealth, and energy out of the regions. So for us, we want a new settlement in this country, a settlement that works for all nations and all regions of the UK, because it's certainly not working for Yorkshire right now. We're very proud to come from where we come from. Uh, we love it, uh, and uh, for us, all that we haven't got is a political expression for, for Yorkshire. So for us, we want tried and tested, first-rate devolution, similar to the Scots, but with certain improvements. I won't bore you with those improvement details. But without further ado, I would just like to uh, pass on to Chris Whitwood, our candidate for Cities of Westminster and London. Oh, it's bright up here. Everyone's looking at me. Is it something I'm wearing? It's okay, you can yeah. see that. <laughs> uh, as Richard said, Yorkshire First want to do something a bit different. Well, my name's Chris Whitwood, and I've been given the honour this general election to stand up for Yorkshire by standing in London. And it may be bizarre, taken just at face value, but give us a moment and I'll try and convince you. So we've travelled south with our Yorkshire petition to contest a seat in Westminster in the hope that you'll listen to our demands to bring politics closer to the people by putting a parliament for Yorkshire. However, Mark Field, Westminster's sitting MP, seemed rather perplexed when he heard about me. He said, and I quote, this man doesn't only need a London A to Z, he's completely off the map, he needs an atlas instead. Genuine quote, bit of an insult too, because if anyone needs a map, the MPs in Westminster do. England is more than just one constituency, but to look at Westminster, well, you could have fooled me. Parliament, Downing Street, Buckingham Palace, Whitehall, Bank of England Stock Exchange, New Scotland Yard, St Paul's, all in one constituency. Tell me that's not centralised. It's time Westminster woke up. Time that they realised that Yorkshire and Scotland have the same sized population. So if we went it alone, we'd do pretty well as a nation. But we don't want independence, we just want better representation. We've twice the wealth of the Welsh and our own distinct culture. Surely we deserve the powers to decide our own future. So it's time to move away from the old, start something fresh, because negative, petty politics has bored us to death. So listen to Yorkshire, hear the ridings roar. You think people are tired of politics? <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the idea of mixing politics and poetry is actually as old as democracy itself. The 6th century Athenian senator Solon drew up one of the first political constitutions. And not only did he do that, as if it wasn't monumental, <coughs> monumentous enough, 
He did it as a poem. Now you whose coffers are full, pressed down and overflowing, put a curb on your greedy soul. It's hard enough to imagine a modern Chancellor of the Exchequer asking the ultra-wealthy to curb their greed, never mind having the passion and the soul to do so as a poem. And that's precisely the point. British politics has lost its passion and its soul, if it ever had one. In the 21st century, communication is easier than ever before, and yet, when it comes to politics, too many people have felt too disenfranchised for too long. It's time for change. How? Well, that's what we're here to find out. For Yorkshire, it means passing more powers to local people. Not just city regions, but to the cities, towns, countrysides together. It means abandoning a negative politics of confrontation and creating a politics of cooperation, where it doesn't matter if ideas are from the left wing or right wing. All that matters is that they make people's lives better. And it means making politics fairer. Politicians should be accountable, properly accountable. Measuring policy not by spin, but by actual proven results. We live in an outdated two and a half party system, where, as Richard mentioned, as a regional party, Yorkshire First would have to contest in 89 constituencies to get BBC election coverage, despite there being only 54 constituencies in Yorkshire. That is why today we take the fight to Westminster to tell the entire nation that when it comes to politics, when it comes to people's lives, more of the same is not good enough. We're a small party for the moment, but we have grand aspirations. And yes, Yorkshire First, we do intend to change the world, and we intend to start by changing our wonderful little corner of it. And when we have done so, then a day in Yorkshire shall ne'er go by from this until the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We may be few, but we're a determined few. Dare I even say, a band of brothers. Yes, because <laughs> he who signs this pledge with me today shall be my brother. Be in no doubt, your vote will strengthen our position. And gentlemen in Whitehall still abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that votes for us on general election day. Yeah. <laughs> I leave you only with this. Yorkshire has a larger population than Scotland, an economy twice the size of Wales, but the powers of neither. It's time for change. It's time for Yorkshire. Thank you.